I want to ask about ideas and creating ideas and how ideas come to be. Why is zero so important for you? At the age of 21, I decided that I wanted to spend my life trying to do something meaningful. And the idea was make a whole bunch of money by the age of 30, then go out and do it. And so after selling Braintree Ven Venmo, my mind had been on this problem for a long time, is, is how, how to think about existence in its most structured form, how to peel back all the layers and really try to understand what's going on. And I was trying to build mental models of how to understand the future. And I kept on uh, coming up with what I thought were blind spots in my way of thinking. And it's very common in the world of technology to hear someone say from a first principles perspective. Uh, first principles thinking is you're basically trying to make the fewest number of assumptions given a certain time frame. Uh, but that didn't satisfy me because there are these rare events that happen which change everything. So for example, uh, Einstein's work in understanding space-time you know, graduated Newtonian physics into a different kind of physics that changed our understanding of the universe. And if someone was going about this from a first principles perspective, it may not have been obvious to them. Uh, but Einstein was working in this creative landscape of uh, not necessarily working uh, with that view. He's going with this creative, like what if I was you know, riding next to a, um, at the speed of light. Um, and so I had read this book at the same time, uh, The Biography of Zero, and it chronicled the difficulty society had in discovering the number zero and then putting zero into practice and how zero had wrecked not only mathematics, but religions and philosophies and societies. It, it is this in, uh, incredibly powerful thing. And I never thought about the number of zero before that. It just was a thing that was given to me. And of course, it's just part of the numbers, but zero is unique in that it enables infinity and also uh, uh, zero like uh, the, on both sides. And so I wanted to come up with this model, this, this idea of think, how to think about the future. And I came up with this idea of zeroth principle thinking. And it's the idea that uh, talent hits the, the target no one else can. Genius hits the target no one else can see. First principles is an exercise of hitting the target that no one else can hit. Zeroth principle thinking is a genius in that it identifies a target no one else can see. And that's what I was trying to look at of if we're looking at the future Again, back to our, for our previous conversation of what is the ideal human in 2050, we can't get there with first principles only. You have to incorporate some zero principle thinking. You have to say, uh, what is the target no one can see? And that's robot in the sand. And it's, it's how do you build these systems that are adaptable to get there? And if you look at the number of zero principle ideas that have landed in the world, they've been sporadic. They're hard to come up with. And if you look at the rate in which the, uh, AI is introducing zero principle discoveries, it's at a much faster rate. And so let's just say over the past couple thousand years, we've had a first principle discovery, you know, like one every blank amount of time and a zeroth every whatever, but we've only had a, we've had a ratio of like, let's say 50 first principle ideas to every zeroth but that ratio is going to change and we're going to start having a lot more zero principle discoveries, which is gonna change our reality to speed that is uh, unimaginable to us. And that's why I, I say that in this moment in 2023, when we're mapping out the future, it's much more important we incorporate zero principle thinking and understanding that map and then building systems that allow us to naturally go towards that. Again, my body. My body, I've said, you can be uh, a first principle system and a zeroth principle system. 
and I'm going to pull my mind out of it. Like let the system run with evidence and data and let it move with the algorithm. And so as a species, same as robot in the sand. And so yes, so zero principle thinking to me is, is a, it's a tool of future literacy that should be taught in schools and should be part of our vernacular today of how we understand the world and where we're heading into. What are example, what's the example of your body operating with zero principle and first principle? Like where's the difference there? Could you help illustrate that for me? Yeah, there's, we've done, so we do all these measurements and then we say, okay, we know that optimal clinical outcomes for liver enzymes are blank. And the scientific evidence says, you know, eat broccoli and cauliflower and like this and that, and you get optimal liver enzymes and liver enzymes of a 16 year old or of this profile. So, you know, do these things to be of a 16 year old healthy profile. And so those things are done and you get it in system. And then there's other things that happen as a result of the system you put into place. Uh, other benefits that happen in the body, other health benefits that happen in the body. And I would categorize those as, in that system, a zero, because they weren't the intended target. It was, it was a externality event, and it's an additional thing that happens. Now, that's, that's a constrained example in body, right? Like, you, of like, basically, you're identifying what wasn't known to exist you're discovering, because it wasn't the intended target you were designing with first principles. And so when you allow a system to run, you're discovering both negative and positive things, negative externalities and positive externalities. Uh, but it's really the system that runs. And so if you say another tangible example of zeroth principle uh, insight is when AlphaGo was playing uh, uh, Go and beat the world champion, who had won the world champion 19 times, 19 times in a row, um, on its, I think it was like move 37, I forget the number of moves, but when it played it that, you know, there are two moves in particular, the observers of the game you know, said this is like uh, some, um, an alien playing from another dimension. It blew everyone's minds. It, it, there's been, human genius has played this game for thousands of years. AlphaGo showed up and made moves that humans hadn't done previously, which broke everyone's conventions. I would call that a, a zeroth principle move because it was, it was genius that could, be, that could have been discovered by humans, but it wasn't. So genius hit the talent no one else could see. Hit the, genius hit the target no one else could see. And so it, it, go ahead. If you had to predict how many zero principled ideas would do you think there will be in the next five years, 10 years, and 100 years? It's reasonable to assume that zeroth principle insights will have some kind of exponential curve when you add computational AI. Why is it reasonable? Uh, because the speed at which it can move through information. What was a zero principle idea or happening that happened in your own life where it broke your version of reality? Demoting my conscious mind and elevating all the organs of me. So to me, it is a, so typically, so a first principles approach on taking care of your body would be something like self-discipline, egg whites for breakfast, you know, like, you know, like the routines of you're just, you're trying to assume the fewest number of things on a given time frame, And if you then say, okay, actually, I'm just going to remove the decision maker altogether. And I'm going to build this system of measurement science and protocol, it hits a target that no one could see. It's like, we, basically, who out there is saying um, the best solution to the game here is to remove our brains from the equation? Like, let's remove ourselves from the principal agents here. And I'm saying I need to remove myself as the principal agent of taking care of me. And then how would you say that someone should go about doing this themselves? Someone listening might be like, I can't get the, the science test, the results, the, all this is expensive, right? Like to create this reality, mm -hmm. not to remove yourself as the sole arbiter, but to, 
to look at the tests and to make adjustments based on the mm-hmm. test. What should the average person do? There's a really great win. There's a great baby step of a win here. It's identifying, again, the power law of bad behaviors. It's identifying that one version of you that creates havoc and leads to the cascading events of bad, of, of bad behaviors. And so it's basically separating you from self. And it's identifying that you can revoke powers of self that do not act in your best interest. So you don't need to incorporate the entirety of Blueprint. You don't need the entirety of my protocol. You can just do that basic step and then watch yourself throw a tantrum right in front of your eyes. Like you're going to kick and scream and beg. You're going to come up with dozens of arguments of why you should still be in charge and why it's a crazy idea. Just watch yourself throw an absolute tantrum. But you have to really separate yourself from mind on this. And then once you do so, again, like liberating me from myself was, has been the best thing I've done in my entire life. And, and I would say as a species, we might want to contemplate this. Our future may depend upon us removing ourselves from the whole situation, not, not obsessed about solving the problems, but literally removing ourselves from trying to solve this problem and letting systems solve them in our place.